Hey everyone, my name is Carlos. I'm a web developer based in Boca, New York. And we're, today we're going to look into SAS. Now, SAS is a tool that's been available for us for a long time. So if you've heard of it, but you're not familiar on why we should use it or how it works, then you've come to the right place. So let's go ahead and get started. So today we're going to cover what is SAS, why we're going to be using it. Then we're going to look at how it actually works. Then we're going to look into certain features that SAS provides. And lastly, we're going to compare it with CSS and SCSS to see how it looks. Okay, so what exactly is SAS? Well, in just SAS stands for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheets, and it's an extension of CSS, which adds nested rules, variables, mix-in, selector, inheritance, and a lot more features. Now, SAS is actually written in Ruby, and it's intended to make our lives a lot easier when writing CSS. But let's look at a few other reasons why we actually want to use SAS instead of CSS. Now, if you have written CSS before, there, I'm sure there's been instances where you have to copy blocks of code over to multiple other elements in order for them to have the same custom styles. So CSS can get very hairy and disorganized and very cluttered. SAS helps us organize this clutter and make it into really specific modules and succinct pieces of code. Another reason is that the syntax is easy to learn especially if you already know CSS. Now, there are a few specific differences with SAS, like the use of indentation and dollar signs to create variables, but overall, the syntax is quite identical to CSS, so it's very easy to learn. One of the most important reasons to use SAS is that with the use of variables and uh, various other features, we're able to reuse uh, a lot of our code. One of the things that irks software developers the most is having to repeat themselves. So as such, mantras like don't repeat yourself and tools that automate repetition are quite popular. And SAS helps us avoid this issue. Lastly, uh, SAS has a very mature and stable community. So SAS has actually been active and supported for about 12 years by its core team. But uh, not only that, it's actually been supported by several tech companies and hundreds of developers. So it's very stable, very mature, and very up to date. So now let's look at how SAS actually works. So SAS is actually a preprocessor. And if you're not sure what a preprocessor means, it's simply a program that processes input data and produces an output. And then that output will be used in another program. Now, this is going to make a little bit more sense in the following slide where I'll explain how the actual flow works. But one other thing I would also like to point out is how SAS actually has different syntaxes. Now, there are two popular ones called SCSS and SAS. So we have SCSS, which is basically standing for Sassy CSS. And this is a superset of the CSS3 syntax. Now, SCSS is more like a middleman between SAS and CSS. Then we have an actual SAS code. So SAS will just be the full-on SAS file that will actually be uh, compiled into CSS. So let's look at how this flow actually works. So let's say you have written your SAS file containing a bunch of variables and using a bunch of the other features that SAS actually uses. From there, it's going to go through a processor or a compiler, and that compiler will actually spit out CSS that the browser will be able to read. So all this is going to happen behind the scenes, and SAS needs to be compiled into CSS because browsers actually cannot read SAS. So they need to be transformed back into CSS. So let's look at some of the features that uh, SAS provides. And just to preface, I'm only going to be showing about three features. Uh, SAS actually provides a bunch more. And I suggest you guys look at the documentation to see what else you can do with SAS. So let's start out with variables. So think of variables as a way to store information that you want to reuse throughout your style sheet. Now, you can store things like colors, font stacks, or any CSS value that you think you'll want to reuse. And in order to do this with SAS, we're going to use a dollar symbol to make something a variable. So here's an example where we actually have a variable called control height set to 40 pixels. And we use that variable for a header class and a subheader class. Now, if we were to write this in CSS, we would simply write the number itself. Now, in this case, we're only using it for two uh, classes. But in long style sheets where we use multiple 50 to 100 classes, it can be quite confusing to uh, scroll back up and see what actual height we used for a previous class. So it's very useful to have a variable that we can just reuse over and over again for different elements. So now let's go ahead and take a look at mixins. A mixin basically lets us make groups of CSS declarations that we may want to reuse throughout our site. So we can even pass in values to make our mixin more flexible. So let's take a look at an example here. In order to create a mixin, we're going to use the at sign directive and give it a name. So we have a mixin here called awesome. And we include it in two different elements, one called body and one is a paragraph. So that awesome mixin can have probably 
well, how many other declarations you might want. Maybe you want to put a border or maybe a radius or a font color, and we can insert those properties into different elements as well. So it's very useful. And this would translate like this in CSS where it's a little bit more declarative and we actually have to specify the width and the height for each element. Lastly, let's take a look at one of the most useful features in SAS called Extend and Inheritance. Now with Extend, we are able to share a set of CSS properties from one selector to another. It's kind of similar to the mixin, but it's not exactly the same. So we have an example here where we actually have an H4 header uh, with some properties listed for that. And we have a label here that has already one property with a cursor, but we want to extend the properties from the H4 element. And if we were to translate this to CSS, it would look like this. Now the difference is not that drastic. It doesn't look that big of a difference. However, we can see how we're already reusing label here. And if we were to have a very large example and we have a large amount of styles that we need properties that we need to add, it might be a little easier to actually use extend in order to actually pass those properties onto different elements. So now let's take a look at a side by side example between CSS, SCSS and SAS. So we have CSS, which stands for cascading style sheets. And if we look here, we're styling an anchor tag to the color red. And whenever we hover over it, the color is going to change to lime. Now, if we use SCSS, which stands for sassy uh, CSS, it's going to look kind of similar. And like I said, it's an in-between uh, style sheet uh, between CSS and SAS. And here we're using variables, but we're still using curly brackets and semicolons. And it's doing the same exact thing. Now, for SAS, which stands for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheets, we have a much more condensed version of what we have from SCSS and CSS. The logic is still the same. We have two colors stored in variables, but we're not using curly brackets here or semicolons, which helps us avoid more errors. So hopefully this video gave you a better understanding of what is SAS and how it actually works. Thank you all for watching. Join the conversation by subscribing to this channel or dropping a comment below. And if you want to take your skills to the next level, start learning on Codecademy today.